Hello, my name is Joe Hildreth, and welcome to Episode 7 of CNC for the Home Hobbyist. In this episode, I'll discuss a couple of the methods available to update the computer that is being used to run Linux CNC controller software. Additionally, I'll show you how to fix what I find annoying with a default application that allows us to view the PDF files on the system. Please keep in mind that I'm not a machinist, an engineer, or a teacher but rather I'm a home hobbyist that would like to share my experience with CNC machines for the home shop. Hopefully, over time I can present enough material to prevent new users entering the hobby from falling into the same old pitfalls that I've encountered. With that out of the way, let's get going. So why should you update the computer? Well, there are many reasons to keep your computer updated, the most obvious being to keep you and your computer safe from malicious attacks via the internet. These attacks come from email, web surfing, and vulnerabilities that might exist in a library or a, com or a program that runs on the computer. So you might be saying to yourself, well, this computer is going to control my mill, and it won't be on the internet, so why should I worry about it? Well, the answer to that question brings up the next logical reason to keep the computer and its software up to date. Computer software is constantly changing. When a bug is found, the software vendor releases a fix for it. These vendors usually release new features or capabilities to their software. Linux CNC is no different in this regard. The developers at Linux CNC are constantly doing things to improve the controller and adding new features. Finally, keeping the computer updated also ensures that you have the newest and most reliable drivers for your hardware. You may think that the hardware itself doesn't actually change, and you would be correct, but the hardware is accessed and controlled by software called a driver. Manufacturers of hardware occasionally update the driver software to improve their performance and fix existing bugs. So what I'm trying to say here is that updates to the computer are important to do. There are basically two ways to update Debian Wheezy and any installed software that you might have. These are either using the command line terminal or the graphical updater. Now there are pros and cons to both methods and I found that using both of them together seems to work best for me. The graphical updater, well the pros are that there's a notification that pops up indicating that there are updates available. And the other big pro is that all you have to do is click a couple buttons and it performs all the updates. Now the drawbacks to the graphical updater is that, well, it's difficult to resolve conflicts. And uh, I think we'll have an opportunity to demonstrate that in the uh, upcoming hands-on part of the video. And the other con is that there's no clear way of removing software that you're, you know, that you no longer need or that's no longer used. Now the command line, on the other hand, its pros is that it offers a very fine granular control over your updates, what you want to install, how you want to install it, and stuff like that, and that it's easy to remove software that you no longer need. Now the cons are that, well, it's it's command line, and a lot of people are uncomfortable being in the command line. And the other thing is that the, uh, the commands seem a little cryptic and kind of hard to remember uh, until you get used to them. But I will demonstrate both of these uh, methods to you in the hands-on practical part of this video. While everything that we need to run and use Linux CNC has been installed, I find that I have an issue with the way the default PDF viewer works. The program to view the PDFs is called C, S-E-E. -E. And while it displays the document just fine, the title bar seems to be stuck under the top panel making it impossible to move around and difficult to manipulate the menus. This just irks me. So my solution to this is to replace the C program with a different piece of software to view PDF files. The software that I'm going to install is called Events. After installing this software, I'll show you how to change the default program to open PDF files and how to edit the application menu to use the Events program instead of the C program. So, you know, this isn't required to do, but if it irks you like it does me, maybe you'll find this little tidbit helpful. Okay, so um, in the slides I told you there are essentially two ways to upgrade uh, Debian Wheezy and the applications and, you know, the operating system and all that stuff. One is the graphical user interface and or the graphical updater. And uh, if there's an update uh, to the computer uh, up here where my mouse is, there's a bubble that will pop up saying, hey, there are so many updates available. And to click the triangle up here in the top hand corner. And if I mouse over it, it will tell you that 
in this case there are 334 updates available. So I want to click on that and uh, here I need to digress a little bit. Whenever you make system changes, right, or, or you want to do something to the system that will affect uh, the whole system or can potentially damage the system or whatever, the computer asks you for a password. Now this is the same password that you use to log in. Remember I set mine up as CNC and uh, uh, this you know tells the computer that you know I do in fact want to do this and uh, this is kind of what's referred to as the sudo password or, or uh, sudo password however you want to call it super user do and uh, so I'm going to put in CNC here so again like I said this just tells the computer this is ex ex exactly what I really want to do and hit enter and we should get a dialog popping up here <clears throat> and immediately we notice that there's a notification here it says hey upgrading may require removal or installation of new packages do you want to perform a safe upgrade which does not remove packages or install new ones well sometimes when you run applications on a computer you may make custom configurations and stuff and upgrading those packages could actually delete your custom configurations and you lose your work so in that case you know you say hey yes I want to do a safe update. In our case we've done nothing with the machine. We've simply installed it and went from there. So we're going to say uh, uh, no I don't want to do a safe one just let's just do it. And then we get presented here with a list of sorry about that. And we get presented with a list of all the applications that are available for update and the download size and you see down here that there's 409 megabytes to download. So I'm going to click install updates okay and then it tells me hey installation of the selected upgrades require removal or installation of packages right so they're saying hey uh, open JDK 7 right that's the Java runtime environment headless this program will replace whatever's currently on there which happens to be version 6 right and same thing with these other um, packages here this library and, and Python 6 so um, it says do you want to continue we're gonna say yes so at this point it's going to download the updates and install and and uh, we'll just sit back in. I'll play this at high speed so you don't have to watch all the stuff and and uh, we'll go from I'll, I'll speed it up and then we'll pick it up here at the end. Okay, so it installed um, 158 of the updates, and it claims that there are 160 or 176 more available. So we're going to close this dialog here, and we're going to. Um, so it says there's 150.3 meg, and there's more. So we're going to go ahead and tell it to update these. Again, you know the graphic updater. Uh, that were pretty simple. You just click on the buttons, not much, but uh, we'll we'll see if it uh, brings up any interesting issues. So I'm going to hit install updates. Uh, I'm not sure what's going on here. So if we encounter this, let's tell it to force it to check for updates. Okay, so it's still reporting the same thing. We're going to tell it to install. Apply, so it says there's 171 more. So sometimes, um, you know, the graphic, you know, the graphic updater. I mean, it's okay, but I mean, I, I've encountered problems like this before. And probably what we'll have to do here is to uh, restart the computer so that the existing updates can take effect, and we can. Uh, install the additional update. So let me do that. I'll restart and then we'll come back and and uh, we'll carry on with our graphic updater. So see you here in just a minute. Okay I've restarted the computer and uh, so we'll, hopefully this will work now. So we still see that we have the um, update notification icon in the upper hand corner. We're going to click on that and remember we're making changes to the system so we're going to put in our password CNC and hit enter and the updater says hey 
this may require a removal package just like last time. We're going to say no. We're going to take whatever's newer and we're going to tell it to uh, install the updates. So it says that there's 150.3 meg to download and let's see what we got here. So it looks like um, looks like we have some other kind of problem going on. You know, I was going to uh, do this in two separate sections, one with just the graphical updater and the other with you know showing you how to do it by command line by reinstalling the system. But I think I'm going to take a little different approach now that we're having some sort of problem here. So I'm going to close the update manager and I'm going to open up a command terminal. So down at the bottom of the screen you see these little icons. The little black one that has the prompt in it is the command line terminal. And um, what we're I don't know why it does that. Um, so what we're going to do here is that we're going to issue uh, we're going to use a program called apt-get. So apt-get, right? Now this program um, is used to install software and update the system and that sort of thing. But now the thing is, remember, in order to uh, change the system, you know, you have to uh, tell the computer that you are purposefully wanting to do something that may change the system. So we have to inform it in some way or another that uh, to do that. So in Debian and Ubuntu and similar Linuxes uh, are. Or Linux I, Unices, whatever they are. Um, we use a program called uh, sudo, right? And that stands for super user do. So, as the super user, as the root user, as the administrative user, do the following. And we want it to say apt get. So, that's the program we want to use. Now, apt get has several. Um, options that you can use with it. Okay, so the one we're going to start with is called update. Right, so we're saying go out there uh, and update all the repositories. And then it asks for your password. Why? Because we're running program as a super user. So CNC. And so here it goes out and it checks all the different repositories that we have listed in our system and updates them. So now once that's done, we're going to do the same thing. We're going to say as super user sudo apt get and we want to upgrade any packages that we haven't got yet okay so remember when we clicked on the um, graphical updater icon it listed a bunch of packages and that's really what we have going on here it's a list of all those packages so it's saying hey okay there's 168 uh, to, to upgrade one we're not going to upgrade and we need 158 megabytes of archives. So after this operation, we're going to use almost five meg of disk space. Uh, well, after five meg will be, dis will be freed. Okay. Do we want to continue? We're going to say yes and hit enter. So now it's going out and it's grabbing each of those pieces of software. And when it gets all those so uh, all those pieces of software downloaded, it will. Uh, it will start installing them. So I'll hush up for now and then we'll just let it do its thing and I'll come in when when we get at a, at a stopping point there. Okay, so here we notice that um, we got a couple messages. We've been interrupted. This is the nice thing about I think the command line. I'm using my mouse wheel and uh, what it's displaying to us is a is a, uh, is a uh, is you know as I'm scrolling down, it's talking about you know these are the, the softwares that we're going to update, and this is the uh, the urgency level, you know whether if it's urgency or whatever, and this and that sort of stuff about the software. Now I don't want to I don't want to drive you crazy with that sort of stuff, so we're just going to hit Q because we're reading a document here, so we're going to hit Q, right, and then it will continue on. So we're going to start installing the software now. Okay, so all the initial updates are done, and um, so let me recap here because this is probably a little confusing. All right, I'm going to exit this terminal. So remember, I said that there are two ways 
that you can update the system. One is via the graphic updater, right? And if I click on this, it says, you know, to enter our password, which we need to do because we're going to make systems. And we, we get this warning about the safe upgrade. Now, this is actually the part that I expected to run in the problem with and uh, to show you how to uh, fix. So if I were to select these and try to install, here, I'll, I'll do that and say install these we get a problem here it says well this is going to change these do you want to do that and we say yes and it's going to download the updates okay it's actually going to do it this time because I checked them all but normally you know if if we read over here it says hey this conflicts with ice weasel right and then we have ice weasel here so it makes it look like you can't um, update it and if you say well I just want to use ice weasel and, and do update it it doesn't do anything at all um, so apparently we have to s select them all but anyway let me explain a little bit about ice weasel all right so Firefox you're probably most all of you are familiar with uh, DBN um, compiles Firefox for their system and when you uh, make any changes or if you compile Fire Firefox yourself Firefox does not allow you to use the name or their icon so to get around that Debian calls Firefox Ice Weasel but essentially they're the same thing okay so anyway I'm gonna hit close here and now we see that our system is completely up to date and if we hit check we should come back with nothing okay so we see that we're good here now the the other way to do uh, system updates like I said is with the uh, command line terminal so if we open the terminal by clicking this icon down here we have to tell it sudo super user do and then the program we use is apt get and then we say update so this goes out and well we gotta give it our password so this goes out and checks all the repositories and what they have compared to against against what we actually have installed on the system so then if we do sudo apt-get upgrade we're telling the computer to, sh to upgrade anything that we have that isn't already done but here we get a message saying that well zero are to be upgraded there's nothing to be newly installed and zero to remove and zero not upgrade so in, in other words everything on the system is as up-to-date as it can possibly be okay so I'm gonna close that so now the other thing that I was talking about was the um, program to view PDFs okay so if we go to our CNC folder the documentation um, entry here and the getting started guide these are um, these are PDFs okay and when we try to open one well it opens up in PDF viewer but you notice here that the menu bar is up underneath this panel and you can't drag it out from under there you can't maximize it right and uh, it's just a pain you know you can barely get to the um, you can barely get to the uh, menu um, options so rather than fight with that because I just I don't know why it bothers me so much but here's how we're gonna fix that so by default uh, DB and Weezy is installed with a program called C S E E that displays um, PDF files okay and that's what's getting wedged up that's the program that we're seeing there that's getting wedged up underneath this panel so we're gonna install a piece of software called events right and how are we gonna do that well we're gonna sudo right because we're gonna make a change to the system we're gonna use apt get that's the program that uh, installs and checks for updates and all that sort of stuff and we're going to use the option to install okay and what do we want to install well we want to install events okay and hit enter ask for the password and it says okay well the following extra packages will be installed so it says well we want events but this other stuff comes with it okay and then here's some packages that you know suggest that you might want to have okay and then these are the actual new packages that are going to be installed um, because you know of because we want to install the program events so we're going to say yes continue with that 
So we'll go out here and download the packages. And then here we see that it's unpacking and, and installing them. And this shouldn't take very long. Okay, so that we got our prompt back. We know that that's done. All right, so now we can um, use events to view PDF files. So let's go to the file system, right? And uh, let me expand this a little bit. We want to go to um, we want to go to user, right? Right here, user, and we want to go to share. And we want to go to doc, right? There's documentation. And what documentation we're looking for? Well, it happens to be Linux CNC. So if we scroll way down here, and actually let me show you something that uh, is a little quicker. If I click up here and I hit Control L, pay attention to these icons. You see that a box pops up here saying, "Well, where do you, is it that you really want to go?" Well, we want to go to user share doc slash Linux CNC. Okay, so you see that it opened up. So that way I didn't have to scroll around and look. If you know where you're wanting to go, you can just enter it. So we see that um, there are uh, four PDF documents here. And let's just click on one. Let's click on Getting Started. Okay. <laughs> now, I don't know why GIMP opened that up. Now, that's a mystery to me because that's not something we would normally have open up. Okay, so let's let's exit that. Okay, so to get events to open these up, we're going to right click any one of the PDF documents. Okay, and we're going to go to properties and we're going to say open this with, and we're going to select document viewer. Okay, E PDF viewers is C, document viewer is events. Okay. So we're going to set close. So now we can click on any of these, the integrator one, for example. You notice that it opens up and and we can maximize it and scroll and everything else. So it's it's opened up in the events program. So that's that's the thing. You know, I want to be able to get a hold of this and drag it around and do different things with it. But now having done that, we'll notice that if we come back over here to CNC and hit documentation, oh man it's still used in C well to fix this we actually have to go in and and edit the menu okay and uh, one thing that I discovered is that it's a little convoluted on uh, XFCE which is the window manager we're using so let's uh, let's open up our browser I mean our terminal okay and uh, if if you want to change if now if you're okay with the other program you don't have to do this but just this is just for those who want to change change the uh, menu so we're going to change directory and we want to go to user share applications oops okay and if we do a list we see all these dot desktop um, files right well these dot desktop files refer to the stuff over here right so here on the right we see Linux CNC documentation dot desktop well that's this right here documentation CNC documentation so we're going to edit these files now these are system files so we have to do and we're making a change to the system so we have to use the sudo command and then the text editor we're going to use is called nano okay and then now what file do we want to edit well we want to edit Linux CNC dash documentation dot desktop so when I hit enter I ask for the password because we're changing a system file okay and then if we look down here we see this is the command that actually um, installs or I mean I'm not sorry not installs but uh, opens the file so user share doc Linux CNC Linux CNC documentation dot PDF that's the file we want to open and then the program that we're using to open with is in user bin C right except that we don't want to use that program we're going to use events right just like that and we're going to hit control X to exit this you know the nano program and we're going to say yes write this out 
and then hit enter we want to write to the same file now if we come over here to the applications menu and go CNC documentation so now you notice that it opens up in events and we can maximize it and all that sort of stuff so the other program that is listed is the uh, getting started guide right so we find that over here is Linux CNC dash getting started dot desktop okay so we're gonna do the same thing we're gonna sudo super user do run the program nano and the program that we want to edit is Linux CNC um, getting oops getting started dot desktop we're gonna hit enter and we're gonna do the same thing we're gonna change C to events okay control X to exit yes we want to write it and we want to write it to the same file so now if we come over here applications CNC getting started guide we see that that opens up in, in events so life is good <coughs> excuse me okay well look I don't want to make these um, um, I don't want to make these uh, videos very long but now there's something I d noticed a while ago that uh, I didn't before so I'll go ahead and point it out so in the CNC folder we see documentation and we see getting started guide okay uh, but I happen to notice when we were in the system right we're, we're going to user and that was share and then doc and then we're going to scroll down find Linux CNC way down here somewhere Linux CNC I notice that there's the integrator and the manual pages so what might help to do here is I'm gonna I've highlighted the integrator manual which you notice is not up here in the list right and neither are the manual pages so we might want to read those so I'm gonna click on the first one to select it and then I'm gonna control and click so I've selected those two I want to right click and I'm going to send to the desktop. I want to create links. Okay. And then if I come over here and look, I see here's these two links Linux CNC integrator. Okay. And if I double click on it, it opens up the integrating, uh, inter integrating integration manual. By the way, this is uh, something that I wrote and contributed to Linux CNC, the uh, best wiring practice right here. Um, so they very kindly accepted it and, and we're gonna do some videos about wiring and and that sort of thing because uh, wiring can be a real issue okay uh, alright so the other thing was the Linux CNC manual pages and uh, we'll get into those and what those are later so alright so look I'm gonna cut this part off uh, here now because we've been uh, I've been blathering along for a little while I will speed up the slow parts and hopefully this video won't be too long so uh, let's go back to the slides and let's finish up. So where to from here? Well, I believe I told you in the last video that the next episode would be testing the newly installed Linux CNC system for latency and jitter. Well, I suppose I inadvertently lied to you and for that please accept my apologies. However, in the next episode we'll talk about testing the machine for latency and jitter and perhaps how this impacts a real-time system. As always, Thank you for taking the time from your busy life to watch my videos. If the videos I produce help you, please consider liking, subscribing, and sharing. CNC is an exciting and rewarding addition to any home shop, and if you have friends who are thinking of dabbling in it, please consider sending them here. Other than that, have a blessed day.